For all you've been missing the past few weeks, I know that one of the reasons for the earlier part of the weeks was you were attending the National Wrestling Alliance annual convention, and I know that you found out in who the two world champions that are now recognized, Harley Race and Nelson Royal, right? That's right. That's right. Now, there was a controversy about Nelson Royal's championship, as you no doubt have told our fans with this uh, uh, Mexican wrestler, Madrill. Alberto and that's Madrill, Alberto right. Alberto Madrill in Houston. But I understand that he has... Uh, what is it that he's down with? Boy, he's going hepatitis. to be hepatitis. Hepatitis. He was unable to defend that title and give the return clause to Nelson Royal, so the NWA yeah. went back, and Nelson Royal is the world junior heavyweight right. champion. Right. You know, a champion must defend the title against the fellow that he took it from within 30 days, Boyd, and, and Madrill was unable to do this. It was an unfortunate situation, but that's the rules, and so Royal does have the championship again. And I know two weeks ago now, you wasn't here, Leroy, and what about the deal between Ernie Ladd and Paul Orndorff as the NWA stripped away the North American title from Paul Orndorff? It's the most unusual situation there, and I guess maybe they're going to come. They didn't do that in the days that I wrestled because we didn't have the instant replay on television, but uh, the National Wrestling Alliance has decided that when they have the instant replay and they prove who was the winner, and that's how Ladd got the championship back. Times have changed and things are changing. A great card, you and Bill. Andre the Giant is 7 feet 4 inches tall, 485 pounds. But Ernie Ladd is also a very big man, 6'9", 326 pounds. And Ernie Ladd is the North American heavyweight champion. But Andre the Giant seems to relish that North American championship belt more than he does the world championship. Well, Reese, the reason Andre the dummy wants me so bad because I beat him in Los Angeles. He goes around telling people that he's never been beat, which is a lie. We were in a couple of battle roars for two, three years. Andre the Giant never lost the battle roar, but I decided to enter some of the battle roars that Andre the dummy was in, and I beat that dummy several times in battle roars. Now, he feel as though he could really hurt me if he could get a shot at the North American title and take my belt. But Andre the dummy, you got a shot. The only shot you're going to get right in your mouth. Your big mouth, I beat you on several occasions and I will beat you again. And if you stand in my face and call me a liar, slap your face real good in the general public. Going around telling people that you've never been beat before. I want you in the square circle worse than you want to get in the square circle. I will slap your face and whoop your family real good for all my fans anytime, anywhere, big boy. Don't call me out because I am the true champion. I'm Oh, I just get so sick down inside and make me want to throw up just thinking about how bad I would like to slap your face. I would slap your face in the presence of your parents, less known in the presence of all the fans, and pin you again, dummy. One fall with a 10-minute time limit, the holder of two championships across the ring, the North American heavyweight champion and the Mississippi state title holder, the mass grappler. And across the ring from Mobile, Alabama, in the blue corner, popular Terry Lathan. Well, there's Boyd Pierce making the announcement for the grappler. And Terry Lathan, the grappler, holds all the medal right now. The Mississippi Championship, the North American Championship. The only thing he doesn't have is the Louisiana Championship. But Killer Carl Cox never left the ring, and he went out and he got the grappler's cane from under the ring, and he's practicing his golf swing with it. Rappers wanting his cane back, apparently. He can't take my cane. What's all this crazy nuts? He can't come out and just take my cane like that. I gotta have it. The referee's telling the grappler to. Get, oh! Wow! Killer Carl Cox gave the grappler his cane. Oh! The brain buster. The grappler. The grappler got his cane back. The grappler got his cane back and he got the brain buster, Boyd Pierce. And Carl Cox has given him his cane. 253 pounds from Mongolia, El Mongo. And in the blue corner at 215 pounds from Houston, Texas, Wade Holt. And your next event live here on Championship Wrestling, the Mongol taking on the rookie from Houston in the green tights, Wade Holt. Jack Howe, the referee, here's the bell. Well, I'll say one thing. You can look at Wade Holt's body and see 
that he certainly couldn't do anything like you just saw Siegfried Stanky do. I lost count of the number of push-ups that Stanky did, but he seemed like a machine doing them. And he did the Hindu squats. Uh, this was developed by Gama, one of the great Hindu wrestlers from Pakistan, India. And Gama, of course, could do 1,000 of them at a time without stopping, and they look easy. But you, have, uh, those of you at home should try that Hindu squat sometime. You see why Stanky has such tremendous thigh development and, a, and this tremendous musculature. He was sitting there doing push ups, one right enough after another with seemingly no effort. And you've got to realize he's a 280 pound man. And anything that you do with body weight, the bigger you are, the harder it is to do. Mongols, tremendous power, upper body power. A lot of Draco Roman technique in that standing suplex. I think he, under, he was looking at this rookie Wade Holt's body and uh, kind of went out there and uh, underestimated him starting with. And Wade made a couple of basic moves, but it's all over now, I'm sure. And the three count of victory as the Mongols slows down the rising aspirations of the rookie Wade Holt. A few weeks ago in a match, Michael Hayes not only has something to tell you people, but also he has something to show you. Well, first of all, we can get these idiots over here to quit hollering. I've got something to say. You know, last week, I was sitting back in the dressing room with Terry and Buddy, and we were watching the wrestling film. And the first thing that came to our mind when we were watching the interviews, these ridiculous interviews between Ted DiBiase and his former football teammate, was why in the world was a former teammate of his getting a shot when this man was the obvious number one contender, the man that put him out of action for eight weeks. And it was quite apparent to all three of us that he was avoiding the man. Then him and his manager came out and politely asked to buy the match. All they had to do if they didn't want to do was refuse it. But no, you wouldn't refuse it. You attacked this man from behind and threw him out of the ring. And then big 260 pound Ted DiBiase, your, I repeat, your North American champion, picks up a mere 130 pound man. A man that is 100 over, 100 pounds less than him, and hurls him, what, five, seven feet in the air to the the steel canvas and locks his figure four leg lock on him and breaks his leg. Well, big deal, DiBiase. You really impressed somebody. And I'm really appalled that you people would applaud and approve this. But I saw through that light a side of this man that I didn't know existed. The compassion. When he went berserk, this big Mongolian ran into the ring, and the little quarterback ran under the ring and got a big two-by-four, and he busted him across the back and couldn't stop him. He took care of him and went after your North American champion, who tried to hit him with the two-by-four, and he chopped right through it. <laughs> he chopped right through it. And if it hadn't have been for eight, I repeat, eight men to held him back and his compassion for his manager because he was worried about him, his safety, you saw as he carried him out. He would have got you, DiBiase. And when I saw that, that's when I got the light. Because, baby, I'm not only beautiful, I got brains. And this is somebody that I want. Now, I want to roll that tape right now, and I'm going to show you people what your North American champion's like. America was a price. We're going to buy you this much. How much are you going to buy it? Let me tell you what. You know, I don't care what animosity or anything. The North American title means too much to me. It means too much to me. I'm here. I signed you the rest. I flew in here. Territory. You want to try to buy me off? I don't have just a price. Just come in the you, you take your man and you get out of here because you got no business being in here. There'll be a place and there'll be a time for you. And I tell you what, I might want to just... Hey! Come on. Come on. Conversation out there. Boy, the, the crowd was drowning out. We couldn't hear the mic, but I'd see some action there. And the little Jap manager has really gouged Ted DiBiase in the belly with that Japanese flag. And it looks like Tully Blanchard, old teammates, even though he's going to be against him, he was going to come to Teddy's aid. He wasn't going to let two foreigners gang up on uh, Teddy DiBiase. And now DiBiase has got Masao Hattori. Wow, he pressed him 12 of his head, slammed him to the mat. 
He's going for the figure four. There's about a 70 to 100 pound difference in weight. That could, that could be pretty. He could break Matory's leg with that figure four. He's locked in the figure four. He can't get loose. The big Mongol is attacking, but Blanchard's picked up one of the ring boards laying on there. It's blasted the big Mongol. Comes to the ring. Karate shot. Until he's down, now the Mongol. Teddy's got the board. The big Mongol is chopping at the board. He just broke that two before. Broke that two before. Kicked Teddy in the head with that big right hand. That massive Teddy firing back. The big Mongol firing at him. Teddy's ducking him. He's got to duck him. He can't let the man hit him solid with that devastating cross side of the karate. Masao Hattori, the manager, laying on the floor, grabbed his knee. He could have a serious injury. Ted DiBiase fighting maybe for his very survival. Chop that two before two. DiBiase's running, trying to stay. Not let the big Mongol get set to where he can chop him. People are starting to fill up to try to bring this under control out there. They look at that big, every time that big Mongol hits somebody, they're laid out. Even Buck Rovey's coming, Jake Roberts, Mike Miller, trying to control the big Mongol. And Teddy DiBiase, they can't hold Teddy off either. Teddy wants him. Teddy knows that the man's got a weapon in that right hand, but it's not making the North American champion back down. He's carrying the fight right against the big giant Mongolian. All the time writhing in pain on the outside of Tory for that fight. leg. Never had the big Mongol. DiBiase catches him a drop kick. The Mongol hits the floor. Sees his manager. That's apparently the only thing that stopped the Mongol. Not all the people in the ring or anything, but him seeing his manager hurt, it stopped him. Now they're restraining. They're finally about eight guys. Now you see there. That's what I'm talking about. Eight men couldn't stop him, and it wasn't until he saw that his manager was hurt that he left the ring for his manager's safety. When I saw that, that's what I need to protect this beautiful face. That's what I needed. So I called Rock Hunter in Atlanta, Georgia, and I bought this man's contract, and I want the people of the Mid-South area to know that I am establishing and congregating an army together because there is no longer going to be any kind of conspiracies like this. When Buck Rowley pile drive me on the floor at Board Pierce, nothing. No fine, nothing. Stasiak nailed Little Bear and he got fined $2,500. Big DiBiase picks on a little man 130 pounds less than him. No fine, no suspension, no nothing. So let me tell you this. You have made your own bed, people, and now you're going to have to lie in it because we've got the army and we're going to destroy everyone one by one. Con. Extravaganza on Saturday night, July 21st, beginning at 8 o'clock in New Orleans at the Superdome. You're going to see one terrific wrestling card. In the main event, the Assassin and the Angel will put their United States Tag Team titles on the line against Cowboy Bill Watts and Buck Robley. The ring will be surrounded by a 10 foot high steel cage to assure that there will be no interference from the outside. No one can get in or out until there's a winner. Plus, this one added stipulation made for the very first time in wrestling history by the NWA to guarantee, without a doubt, that there will be no interference by Rock Hunter. He will be placed in this very steel cage that I'm in right now, and he will be suspended high above the ring there in the Superdome. So come on out and see it.